My name's Isaac, better known as Izzy the Bricky, and this week I wrapped up our brand new extension we took over from the Cowboy Builder, and then later on in the week I went to go see a brand new, very lucrative job. You guys are watching the new installment of Izzy the Bricky Weekly. Ooh. Monday morning and we are back on the extension. Over the weekend, the scaffold has turned up and made a couple of alterations to the scaffolding. As you can see, um, I need to make a few phone calls this morning because it does not look safe at all. We did have scaffolding here supporting above. Obviously now they want to get wall plate, they want to get this flat roof on it. So they've taken part of the scaffolding down, but as you can see, it's dropped and it just doesn't look safe up there for anyone to be on. Even though we don't have any work up there to do ourselves, it's still not very good for any other trade to be up there. We're avoiding the scaffolding today, but we have a list of jobs we want to do today. While the weather's terrible, we really want to crack on with these. We've got to run through everything now, and then we're going to start knocking them out. We need to stone up around the entire job because we're not having these scaffolders back, thankfully. We're going to end up using trestles to get everywhere up to 2.4, which is going to be our wall plate height. So stoning up needs to happen today. Next, I know it's a little bit dark in here, but we need to build a three-quarter pad stone under this steel, and then somehow around this steel here, we need to build another pad stone. There's also this window we need to look at and sort out, brick this sill back up, stick a new lintel in there, brick over it, and then that'll be another job ticked off. Right, next couple of jobs. Put a couple of courses on this window up to this height, because both window sills are just getting raised ever so slightly. Also, on the topic of bricking up, you can see how that brickwork there is totally useless. Obviously, the house has subsided, and I spoke about this in a previous video. Previous bricklayer who put a lintel in below, and I don't think he acroed anything very well, so everything's sunk. So all of this needs to be rebuilt. Finally, we have all of these helix bars here. These help support brickwork that is cracking or failing. Insert these, resin them in, and it stops any further cracks. So we've got 10 of these to put in and loads of resin. So we're gonna go around and put these in places where I feel is really needed. We've got loads to get on with today. So we're just gonna get stuck in and probably start upstairs because the weather's proper bad. So we've just finished racking back all this brickwork what's really loose. Now, back in the day, they used to build out of lime mortar which is quite a soft, flexible mortar. But the only thing is, over time, it gets quite weak. All this brickwork here is loose there as well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a helix bar in, running across here. That'll act as like an anchor point for this part of the brickwork and this part of the brickwork. So it'll just strengthen everything. Obviously these stop further cracking. So I'm gonna bed that on with compo. And then in a couple of courses, I'm gonna throw ties out. Yeah. And I'm gonna take that off, obviously, and rebuild it. And then we're gonna have ties as well. While it's still a bit drizzly outside, we're still tackling all the internal work. Now we have this steel, what is supporting all of these joists here. We have a 160 mil bearing on this steel. So if I really wanted to, I could do three cores of blues, all straight nick, supporting that. But honestly, straight nick's no good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this back a little bit further I'm gonna do a steel saw cut just there, and then I'm gonna do a brick and a half pillar all the way up. You always want your steel to sit on a full brick, so you can work your bond out by working from the top down. So if we go full brick, half brick, full brick. So when I do this cut here, if I start with a full brick here, 
and a half there. My bond will work, so there's a full brick under that steel. What we've done, I've just put a small starter pack up here just to help support this pad stone, even though it's not really going to be going anywhere. It'll be nice to get it tied to this wall structurally. Uh, now, there is a small gap between the joist and the top of this steel, and that's because the ceiling and the floor joist above us are all over the place. So what the joiner's going to do, and I've just had a chat with him, he's going to pack this because we've got this steel perfectly level, exactly where we want it. So he's going to pack all under these joists, and hopefully that should be our job almost done. Thick. Brilliant. Um, right, so I need somehow to try and get a pad stone under this steel here. But what we've got, we've got a timber lintel there. We've got a 160 mil wide concrete lintel there with rebar going through. We've got some brickwork here and 140 mil blocks. So it's a right mess to try and sort out. But ideally, we're after a three course pad stone. So I'll probably still saw court down here and just see how we can get this looking somewhat right and proper again. Um, yeah, a bit of messing about, but the build inspector's proper on us to get this supported properly, because as you can see, it's a right mess. Uh, you can see how the pad stone is set back compared to this brickwork here. But if you follow this wall through, it lines through right, and then it's where the other brick layer bricked up using these 140 mil wide uh, like trench blocks or whatever. And then you can see here how the original building actually corbels out. Don't ask me why. So like I say, we've just bricked all this up so it's done, slated, packed, exactly the same thing over there. And now all we need to do is go outside and do one more lintel replacement. It's just gone half two. Drew's just bought round 60 concrete blocks because that'll take us to our wall plate height in here. We've been totally avoiding the back of this extension, but the scaffolders have just been to try and amend the mess they did over the weekend. So that's somewhat safe now, so we can start working on the extension again. We're already halfway through or pretty much finished with the list we made this morning. And I'm just working now on putting our uh, final lintel in. So we've just slotted this in. I definitely didn't lose my trowel down the cavity uh, for 20 minutes. And yeah, 150 mil bearing either side. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw in another helix bar just above this lintel. I'll bed it on with some compo, because I don't know if you, you can see, there's a lot of cracking all forming above this window. So hopefully that should stop any cracking. Yesterday, we were lucky enough to finish off pretty much all our jobs. Today, I'm going to be throwing up all this block work to wall plate height. I'm going to be sitting on the lintel because the joiner wants to get this flat roof on by Thursday. What I've done, I've just worked out all of the heights of the underside of our new ceiling in here, which I'll go over now. In the new extension, right, we want the ceilings to run through level. So what I've done, I've taken a reading from our existing finished floor level up to the underside of the original joist, which is two meters. 540 millimeters so at the moment we have two meters 440 millimeters from our finished floor level which matches the existing to the top of my block work at the moment i'm 15 millimeters high but i've taken that reading on all the corners and i'm exactly the same which is good so all i've done i've done this measurement take that measurement there and that leaves us with, with 490 millimeters Okay, so that's a measurement we've got to play with. I know that my wall plate is 85 millimeters with a bed joint. I know my block is 225 millimeters. That gives us this measurement here, 310 millimeters. Take that from that, and that leaves us with 180 millimeters, minus 10 mil for the bed joint. And then that leaves us again with 170 millimeter 
block split. We've got full block going in, we've got 170 mil split going in, and then we've got our wall plate. And that will take us to the existing finished height of the underside of those joists. Drew's gonna get all the cutting done and all of our splits done, and I'm gonna start blasting in this side of the wall. Just something to bear in mind if you are using these slightly older rustic bricks these measure across 115 mil depending on which which one you pick up compared to the 100 mil of the standard metrics we use nowadays so when you set the face of your lintel you need to make sure that you set it back slightly more follow me you can see how the brick i'm going to lay over my lintel is ever so slightly set back from the face brickwork. So you need to bear that in mind if you're using slightly bigger bricks, okay? I think that makes sense. Just explaining to Drew about how we're gonna build over this lintel. Whilst we're gonna put a full block on and then we'll put a small sliver on the top. That leaves me with about a 50 mil sliver of a concrete block under the wall plate. Isn't bad, but it's not really ideal because obviously you've got some weight on top of that on a small sliver on a concrete block, it's quite brittle. And then I was also explaining that if we do lay a full block here, we're actually forming straight nick joint. So we've got a lintel which is bedded on this little block here, 200 mil. But if I lay another block straight on top of it, what I've done, I've broken the bond. So we've, we're actually straight nick. And then when I come to lay the small 50 mil sliver over, this lintel is only really going to be bonded into the extension by a 50 mil sliver running over the top. So what we've decided to do is do a almost 100 mil split here, and then we're going to do another split over it. But then I'll be able to go half bond, half bond, and then that means the lintel is properly tied in to all of my corner. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> like a woodpecker. <laughs> yeah, get that one on camera. <laughs> right, and then, you know, I always do this, Drew, but check it for level that way. Yeah. So when the joiner comes to put on this timber, it sits nice and flush. So there we go. Wall plate, done. Right, it's just gone two o'clock. We've got set up down this tight alleyway. I've put on 140 bricks, 40 of the new ones, 40 of the old ones. Earlier on, I dubbed the wall plate on and had all of the trays set underneath that. So that's all ready to rock and roll. And now what I'm working on is building this wall up eight courses. Um, we're having a warm roof. So the insulation is gonna be on the top. So I was just speaking to the joiner, he's having eight inch timbers come across here, but to save having a massive fascia board, he's gonna do like a little pistol cut. That means I'm able to bring my brickwork up another two courses 
to save on a massive fascia. I don't fully understand it, but the joiner seems to know what he's on about. So eight courses of brickwork, Drew's cleaning more bricks. Yes, yes. Wednesday morning, back on the job. Now, yesterday we made really good progress downstairs. We got on almost seven courses, just on top of the joiner. We're now swapping it to a cold roof, so we actually don't need to go eight courses, only seven. So that's good, we're almost done on this side. In a little while, we're gonna hop on down to the other side, and then we're gonna go across the lintel we laid yesterday. Now at the moment, I'm going around the entire building upstairs, doing all these little bits of snagging in the eaves where there's just a couple of bricks missing. So we're gonna quickly replace all of them and then we'll be back downstairs. Easy. It's just gone half 10 and I finished everything I need to do up there. While I've been doing that, Drew finished off the brickwork over there. We've had a big tidy up, so that's pretty decent. All of that side is totally done now. We've cleaned up a load of bricks and fully loaded out here. Um, instead of actually loading out on the scaffold, decided to load out on the wall it's easier for me for access and even though the scaffolders suggested them putting a scaffold up here i thought it's safer if i just trestle it and do a dodgy trestle scaffold rather than them scaffold it because they're just lethal anyway we're going to set up a massive wrap back here we've got seven more courses to get in and uh, yeah we should be laughing and hopefully wrapped up today Yes, so we have finally finished building this gable end here. The pointing's not too bad, I need to go over it. Even though I made the compo as dry as possible, the bricks have that much moisture in that everything's just turning to piss. We're gonna set up a trestles and a scaffold across this front, build up to the lintel, and then although the drawing and the client hasn't really specified a detail over the lintel, I might put something a little bit fancy, just depending on how I'm feeling really. So scaffold set up, maybe a lintel detail over this, and uh, yeah, Drew is just cleaning bricks like he has been for the last six days. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to put on a dental course um, or I've actually got to do some dog tooth but there was I was going to put some detail on but there's nothing on the house and it's not really in keep and I also really can not be bothered um, so we have three courses on over the lintel at the moment we've sorted out all of our upstands we poles are in We've got another two courses, and then that is gonna be this extension almost finished bar a little bit of messing about inside. So hopefully the final push, we've got two buckets of compo left, and Drew is still cleaning bricks. <laughs> so let's do it. <laughs> We ran out of compo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I realised when I rush a mix in that, it's wet. A couple of minutes longer, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm screaming, get compo.
just on the flat roof and all we have to do really to wrap up this entire job is do some brick replacements down here. The entire four courses off the underside of this old windowsill has totally collapsed. So we're going to rebuild it back up and then that is going to be a wrap. There we go, that is this job totally wrapped up. Join has been cracking on, fascia soffit is on. I've done the chimney, I did all the window sills, did all the beam fill, insulated everywhere. Just loads and loads of messing about today. But overall the job is looking fantastic. I'm especially really happy with it, especially for what it was like when we first found it. So not too bad at all. Five days it's taken Drew and I to whip this up and every single day Drew has been cleaning these bricks. Um, tomorrow I'm going to go do some stuff for Fixed Radio and I'm going to go look at a brand new job so I'll take you along with me. But for now that is this job wrapped up. I'll catch you tomorrow. Friday morning and I'm just about to pull up to potentially a new job which is going to be some work in between some steels, some units and hopefully a retaining wall and then potentially an extension on in on an existing unit. So we're gonna have a little look now and uh, try and get a few clips and see what it looks like. So all of this is cladded, so that's no big bother at all. I was getting all excited thinking all oh, this was brickwork. I'm quite disappointed now, mate. But it's just this up to there. Yeah, 1,000 bricks, 200 block. So back of that out and extending over there. and this entire wall rebuilding then. It's a huge wall to rebuild, we won't want calculations for it. <laughs> can, we do this, can we do this on a special then? No, but I, I mean, it's, look, I've even blocked out my address. And <laughs> on, um, so just, it I'm, is, because it's going out to all of my 1.3 Proper, proper busy day. So this morning I went to go see the potential new job. Just put a price in to do that really small infill where someone's already extended the existing unit, thousand bricks, 200 block, few little bits and bobs. So if that comes good, I'll be jumping on that on Monday. So just waiting to see if uh, that price gets accepted. Straight after that, I went to Northampton to go meet all the presenters uh, from Fix Radio, which was absolutely fantastic. Really nice to please meet some people. Obviously we watch and listen to all these people. So it's really good to, uh, yeah, bump shoulders with a few nice lads bit starstruck I actually was because I've been watching this joiner Rob Clevert for years now when I was an apprentice I was watching him and Roger Bisbee on Skill Builder another YouTube channel and um, so it was amazing actually getting to meet him and hopefully he's gonna knock me up a couple of corner blocks out of some fancy wood but yeah anyway that is where we're gonna be leaving it for today all I've done all day is pretty much drive around price jobs and uh, be very sociable so Hope you've enjoyed this episode and Drew and I will catch you next week and we might potentially be on a new job.